Hello, today I'm going to be talking about an issue with uptake on the electric Eowheel Nano 2. Now, when I designed this, I designed it so that the bobbin wouldn't wobble back and forth to reduce noise. Now, when I did that, it turns out there's a small variance in manufacturing where these maidens or the arms that hold the flyer in place uh, can uh, flex in or out uh, just by a, a millimeter or two. And that seems to be causing some uptake issues for some people. So what I did was um, I didn't have any that reproduced the problem. I, I looked through several of them and none of them, I mean, they all spun really well. So I didn't have, I think the issue is pretty rare, but um, what I did was I modified one of the cases so that the arm bends in quite a lot. So hopefully you can see in the video where this arm or maiden is sort of bent in quite a lot. And you can see that when I'm trying to put on the flyer, like, I mean, it's like way bent in and you have to flex it out a lot to get the flyer in place. And it's actually so extreme in this example that the, the flyer keeps kind of popping out um, when it's just sitting there. So um, this obviously won't spin. What all that clamping pressure does is it makes it quite difficult for the bobbin to spin. Now this is an unmodified one and you can see that when I take this one out there is a little bit this is the worst one I could find after searching through about 10 of them uh, and there's a little bit um, fraction maybe a millimeter or so of where I have to bend the arm out to get that bearing in. But um, this one spins perfectly fine. The bobbin, um, while it doesn't spin freely, when you apply tension uh, with the tension band, it slows down the yarn and creates an uptake. Now, if you have one that has a little further bent in arm, then I'm gonna show you some techniques for bending these arms out. This case is made out of ABS plastic and ABS plastic has what's called a glass transition point, and that's basically where the plastic starts to get uh, pliable and it will hold its new position, so it gets flexible, and you can move, bend it a little bit, and then it will hold its position. And that's how I modified it, this, this one, so that uh, this arm is bent inwards, and it's holding that position, you know, it'll hold that position indefinitely. So what we need to do is we need to heat up this case uh, and bend it out as one of the solutions. The other solution, and I'll go over this one first, is you could actually um, uh, sort of remove just a little bit of the uh, lip on the bobbins and all of your bobbins, and then it'll work. I'll go over that one first because it's pretty simple and uh, just requires a piece of sandpaper. Okay, so for this one, there's a little trick with these flyers. This bearing only goes on so far and that's far enough so that it can clamp the uh, bobbin but just sort of barely so if you just remove just a little bit of this uh, plastic on one or both of the ends then the bobbins will uh, rotate freely and what I've got here is some fairly coarse sandpaper uh, it's 80 grit, but you could do it with uh, finer paper, probably 100 grit, 150 grit, probably work fine. But basically all I do is I try to put it nice and flat on this uh, sandpaper, and then I just go back and forth a few times, a little more, try it in my best to keep it flat, and that's, oh, where are we in the video? So that's taken off significantly more than we need to. So you, this is the side I was sanding and you can see that it's not perfectly even but that doesn't matter too much in this case. Uh, and this side is significantly bigger. I think you can see that that one's the original and that one's the sanded off one. You don't, definitely don't want to make it all the way flat although I guess that wouldn't matter too much but um, I just sand off you know a little bit a millimeter or two of the plastic there is more than enough but there is a trick to this one. So when you're sanding, if I put it on the flyer right now, it doesn't spin well at all. And the reason for that is I, the sanding has sort of pushed in some plastic into this hole. So then what I do is I take a little knife and I just kind of go around 
this hole a little bit and that's really all you need to do. I'm actually going to do the other side just because sometimes there's a little residual plastic there as well, especially when you're handling them, but there. And now this one should spin freely on the flyer and it does. So then if you install it, and what I do is this is the end that I've sanded and I will put that towards this end and I can see that now when I put it in here, the bobbin has this little bit, about a millimeter of wiggle back and forth. And that's going to let it spin a lot more freely. Let's see if we can get it. So, so that's spinning much more freely than it did before. So if you really want to go low tension, uh, that kind of fix is one of the options. So now here we're back to the more extreme case where I've really modified it. And while you could do the version I just showed, um, it's not going to be ideal because just getting this flyer in means bending this plastic arm out a lot and it, it's kind of a pain. So uh, in this kind of a case, what you're going to want to do uh, oops, is you want to bend this maiden or portion that holds the flyer. You want to bend that outwards and there's several ways to do that. Um, this is a heat gun and this does an excellent job. In fact, it's almost too good. You got to be a little careful not to melt it so much that it becomes really wobbly and it kind of gets distorted. You want to do it from a distance and then um, sort of bend the arm. So I'll, I'll show how this one works because it, it is, it's the quickest and sort of easiest. But I've got it, whoops. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on. I've got it set to a a pretty high temperature for this gun uh, just so that it goes quick. You could definitely experiment but um, the best place to heat it up is sort of in the back because that's where the most of the plastic is but with this heat gun you can do it really from either side but um, I'll sort of show you how it works from over here. So basically I'm just heating this up and what's going to happen is the plastic is going to get pliable. And I'm probably going to go to a, a little bit higher temperature than I need to go. But really what you want to do is you want to hit from a couple of different angles to get it all nice and sort of equally heated up. And now at this point, it's quite pliable and I can easily bend it way more than I need to. So when you're doing this, you probably want to have the flyer on here and, um, along with this bearing and this will help you sort of keep everything aligned well uh, and then you sort of will let it dry or um, cool off and as it cools off it will sort of hold its new shape. Uh, so I've probably got this one out a little bit too far. Let's see. Yeah it looks like it's already solidified enough that I'm gonna have to heat it up a little more. And I mean, like I can bend it and it's just gonna hold sort of a new, if I held it at this position as it dried, well, I mean, I already did, it got really, okay, let me a little more, just sort of showing you, like you can really like, with this heat gun one, you can really kind of pick the position you want. But if you have the flyer in and kind of get it to a spot where you like it, where it's got maybe just a little bit um, of wobble room with the flyer, and then you let it cool off like this, it's going to um, hold that new shape once it's sort of cooled down. So let's get this fire. And before, remember, it would hardly even spin and I had trouble getting it into its brackets. And now, um, I mean, this, this flyer like fits in maybe even too loose, like this bobbin kind of wiggles back and forth about two inches or two millimeters and that's totally fine but it's going to spin you know really great uh, super low tension and um, if you're looking to modify your nano so that it doesn't have you know any kind of inward pressure at all that's a great solution i also found that just a regular at least some regular hair dryers will work now 
what I found with a regular hair dryer is it took a lot longer. So I'll just sort of demonstrate. So on this high dryer, hair dryer, where's the, I'm setting it to the hottest temperature and the highest airflow. I found that creates the most heat and it does definitely work. Here, let me turn it off so I can talk. But you do that and you just sort of heat up both of these. And the nice thing with this hair dryer is that you can't overheat it. With a hot air gun, I can actually overheat it and start deforming things if I hold the temperature uh, too high and they're too long. But with this, at least the temperature of this hair dryer, uh, that wasn't a concern. I had to sort of heat it up for about one to two minutes, making sure I got, you know, all the areas nice and warm. And then it wasn't super flexible, but um, it definitely would hold its new shape that I bent it to. So let me just sort of demonstrate what I'll do. So you'd have to do basically that and get those joints really nice and warm for about, um, a minute or two with that hair dryer, and then at that point, what I would do is I'd apply a decent amount of pressure and then hold it in this new position for about 10 or 15 seconds, and it would form to a, a new uh, upward position, and you could sort of fine tune it a few times if you didn't get it exactly right the first time, but that definitely worked. Now, the last one I'm going to show you is how you can use boiling water to accomplish the same thing. I figure most people would have a hair dryer, but probably not everyone, or maybe your hair dryer doesn't go hot enough and you don't want to get a hot air gun. Uh, the problem with boiling water is that you've got this circuit board here and a motor here. So I would suggest taking those off before doing this. And it's pretty easy. You can just pull this dial off or if your fingers aren't strong enough, you can pry it off with a screwdriver. Then there's just two uh, screws holding the circuit board in place. So I'm gonna take those out here. And then there's two more screws holding this motor in place. And again, if your fingers aren't strong enough, you can pry this pulley off uh, with a screwdriver, but um, I just took it off. And then we're gonna take these two screws out. There we go. And at this point, um, the only things left on here are things that they don't matter if they get wet. The uh, tension band doesn't matter if it gets wet. Magnets don't care. The plastic definitely doesn't care. So then what I would do, so I'd get a bowl like this and you can heat up some hot water however you want. I've got, let's show you what I've got. I've got like this pitcher and I just turn it on and uh, it takes about a minute to heat up, so I'll come back when it's boiling. So once you've got the water boiling like this, what you want to do is you might want to pour a little water in first, heat it up, and then dispose of it. Uh, just to, because you want to get, if you're using boiling water, it boils around 100 degrees Celsius. And you really want to get it a little hotter than that, but... This is like an easy and clean substance to use. Um, now I'm just going to let it sit and uh, for a little while. If you use something with a higher boiling point, like um, I think olive oil boils at 180 degrees. That's Celsius. That's that's too hot. You'd probably want to let that cool to like 110 degrees or something, and you'd end up with a big mess. I, I wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, it's, you, you definitely want to watch the temperature pretty closely, but with water, it just kind of works at least at my, um, altitude. So I'm at about, uh, 700 feet above sea level. And the higher you go, uh, it's, uh, going to boil at lower and lower temperatures. Uh, so at certain altitudes, I'm pretty sure this won't work, but I don't know where that would be, but I just take it out of the water and you're going to want to have a cloth because it's pretty hot. Obviously it's just in boiling water. And then you can just sort of, you got to use a little pressure because it's on the low end of that glass transition point, but you can, um, so I'm bending it in because I just sort of want to demonstrate that now I can see that it's, it's bent in a lot further than I would like, like here. So like it's going to hold this position. Whoops, got it backwards. It's going to hold. Ah! 
So it's going to hold this position where it's in a little, it's got, now it's got some, a moderate amount of clamping, but if uh, this water might be getting a little cool now, but let's try it one more. Whoops, that's the wrong side. Um, it's a little more hot, hot water in there and we're going to bend it back out and see if we can get it to hold a, a good shape. So we just pull it out and sort of, now I'm flexing it outward this time. So I'm probably applying like, you know, maybe five, 10 pounds of pressure with my finger. And let's see how that does. We're gonna set this in there. And yeah, that's really good. So the bobbin has maybe one millimeter. So by default, I want it to have a little clamping pressure, like I said in the beginning, just so that um, it, uh, keeps the vibration of the bobbin down and uh, that keeps the noise down. But if you want to go really low temp, um, really low friction with um, the bobbins and uh, be able to use a, a low tension, then you really want to get it so that the bobbin just spins like this. And to do that, you have to move that arm out a little bit. So uh, like I mentioned, you can do this with sandpaper or there's various solutions for heating it up. Now there's other options, like if you have hot sand bath or something, that would work excellent. Uh, but um, I don't have one of those. I don't think many people, and if you do have one, you probably um, understand how to set the temperature. But what I found works well, probably the easiest is if you have a hot air gun. Um, if you don't have one of those, but you have a hair dryer, try it out. And if you don't have that, then uh, try out boiling water because that seems to work as well. Uh, and definitely post a comment if you try some other solution that works well for you. I don't think most people will be doing this, but I wanted to put out this video because there's a lot of people that are sort of confused about what's different between wheels and trying to, you know, reduce the amount of tension that they need to use when spinning. And uh, this will accomplish that. Thanks for watching.